Hi, everybody. It's Deanna with Tools of Energy Protection.com, your energy shift advisor and Akashic Records expert. How's everybody doing tonight? It is June 22nd, 2021. And boy, do we ever have a lot going on on this planet. So I'm going to do a little bit of housekeeping while I'm waiting for everybody to jump on tonight. Um, we're on our time at 6 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, which is a little bit earlier, so I can uh, spend some time with my family as well. And, uh, you know, summertime always brings so much fun and so many activities, but you may have noticed um, that here lately, it um, uh, it is just <laughs> energies all over the place. So tonight, I'm going to take a deep dive into transformation a little bit farther than I usually go. So, so those of you that haven't joined the Energy Shift Inner Circle, you're going to get a little tiny glimpse of what we talk about in the Inner Circle tonight. And I'd like to remind you that if you're still having some challenges coming up this Thursday and Friday at For Heaven's Sakes Books, um, there is a special on pricing. So if anything we talk about tonight resonates with you and you want to work with me or you desire to work with me to kind of get yourself upright or get the icky stuff out, then feel free to reach out to the bookstore at 303-964-9339. That's for Heaven's Sakes Books in Denver. I'll be there all day Thursday and Friday. So uh, hello there. Oh, hi. Uh, say hi to Mary. Hi to, to Joe. Thank you for coming on. And let's get down to it. So if uh, you happen to see some smoke floating around here on my screen, don't worry about it. I have white sage on tonight because these energies are so thick. I know I've done that in the past and people are like, wait, you've got smoke. <laughs> no, the building's not on fire. Not yet anyway. Okay, so here we are at uh, June 22nd, 2021. And tonight I'm going to do a deep dive. So I'm going to talk about, um, I'm going to talk about spirituality. I'm going to talk about the Bible. I'm going to talk about time and space where we are. I'm going to talk about the alignment of the planets. And um, then we'll pull some cards for next week. So any of you that saw this last week, and you know what cards we pulled, it, we were laughing at it, but it all lined up. So I decided on these programs to go ahead and use some cards, some Oracle cards, uh, because then you can see them and it's much more fun than if I'm just looking at the Akashic Records, but I get the same information. So again, welcome aboard. Anybody that you know, hi, hi Becky, anybody that you know right now that is struggling emotionally, um, that's just kind of freaking out, lots of anxiety, uh, please share this video with them. Anybody who's highly sensitive, empathic, or starseed, because this is a huge time. So what's going on? June 20th, which was uh, just a couple of days ago, we had the summer solstice, or the longest day, supposedly, of the year. And we also had some planetary alignments that happened. And um, some of them are shifting and some of them are going backwards. We've got a lot of retrogrades going on. And so what that does is that impacts the electromagnetic frequency of our body. So there's something called the heartbeat of the earth. You can look that up and it's a real thing. And it's the electric pulse of our planet. And it is affected by the way that the planets are aligned. So if you want to look at astrology or astronomy, either one is fine. But what I'm saying is as the planets move, it shifts the frequencies. And it's like having marionette strings kind of tied to us. And, mm, you know, and how are we feeling? And this is an especially big one. And I'm going to tell you that I am excited to be here on this planet at this time. Eh, coming up to this point, I was a little, <laughs> I was a little like, oh, I don't know if I want to be here. But now I see that it's so super exciting because we as human beings on this earth, have been given a gift to dump all of the karma from not only ourselves, but from the energy fields from other lifetimes or other timelines, if you prefer. And at this point in my career, you know, I used to worry really about if people believed in past lives or if they didn't believe in past lives. That's why I throw the past lives in and the timeline in. But at this point in my career, I love you all so much, but it's time for you to shed the shit and to get on board with what's happening. So whether you want to call it a tomato or a tomato, it's time to make pasta sauce. <laughs> 
Okay. Anyway, <laughs> that's a Monday joke on a Tuesday. So what I told you is we we're going to come on here tonight. We're going to talk about what's happening. And then I'm going to give you some steps on what you can do to align or tune yourself. And then we'll do a card reading because that's fun and also gives good information. But I'm imploring you at this time in your life to bring yourself to rights. What does that mean? Well, if you've been kind of all over the place or you're, um, you're in, okay, I'm going to just say, I'm going to talk about relationships for a minute. So a lot of people that watch this program are highly sensitive or empaths. Uh, somebody the other day said, well, if I'm an empath, does that mean I'm empathic? Well, yeah. <laughs> and they wanted to know what that is. So here's briefly the people that I'm speaking to. So a empath is a person who has little spidey senses, like a bee, and they sense what's going on with other people. They read their emotions, not necessarily their thoughts. And if that empath has not trained themselves to have safe boundaries energetically, what happens is we put our little senses over there and we sense somebody's wacko emotions, anxiety, you know, um, a lot of the isms, workaholism, alcoholism, those kind of people that are struggling with their own self-worth and they're numbing out and I am calling you out. Yes, I understand what it's like to be a workaholic. And you can numb yourself in your work all the time, but who are you without your work? And the same thing with anything else you can numb out on. But most empaths that are not well during this time that I have met are in relationships with sociopaths, narcissists, and psychopaths. If you don't know what those things are, I want you to stop this video if you're watching it on replay and go look it up and look at the cycle of abuse. Because that's generally where so many of you lovely souls are stuck. And that's why this time is so big. And you can shed the shit. Okay? I have so much passion tonight. When I came on, I couldn't wait to get on. Because I, my desired outcome is to speak from the rooftops. So share this video if you find it to be worth having. Share it now. Share it later. Because this is a hugely transformational time for highly sensitive people, impasse and starseeds. Okay, so impasse. Impasse, up until now, we have spent so much of our time being groomed by people that weren't energetically safe for us. What is grooming? Basically, you get a psychopath or sociopath uh, or narcissist in your life, and they see your loving energy that you were born with this is where you, why you're here in this space and time. And you're just filled with all this love, you know, all this joyous energy. For those of you that are older, you might go, oh my gosh, I'm so drained. I don't know if I got any left. You do. <laughs> but these beautiful people that came, including myself, there was waves of them that came. There's some in my age dynamic. There's some in like the late 20s, just waves of them. And they came with an extra, if you will, emanator out of their heart to shed love to others for times like this. But I'm going to ask you, how many of you can shed light at a time like this if you feel like shit? Not many. So I'm going to just speak from my heart. I have a little script. I'm going to toss it. <laughs> and I'm going to speak from my heart. Might even cry. <laughs> feeling it. <laughs> so here we are, and, and most of us were very loving people. And we didn't understand that there were people out there that wanted to suck our energy dry. That's what they wanted to do. And that's what I'm telling you with a sociopath, a psychopath, a narcissist, and there are different varieties of them. And those people came from highly sensitive, empathic parents, one or the other, and they had a similar gene inside of them. And they suffered some kind of emotional or physical or both abuse. So they came out lovey like us. Okay, listen closely. This is so important. So they came out lovey like us and their parents, for whatever reason, 
you know, if it was the, the Depression era or if it was the 1950s or whatever it was, their parents got to a point where they had to, you know, just kind of suck it in and survive. And they didn't want to deal with their kids. And I'm not saying that's everybody, but this is some scenarios I've seen. And so when that happens, they have tunnel vision. And these kids that are lovey and huggy don't get the tension they need. They don't get the boundaries that they need. They don't get uh, the direction they need. And if the parents are in any way, shape, or form, or teachers, or people that were uh, authority figures at that time, you know, could have been a priest. And they said, you know, you are, you know, basically bad or wrong, or they beat down their self-esteem and their self-worth, then those people, and this can be regular people too. It's not just, you know, highly sensitive and past star seeds. But you have your self-esteem, you know, beaten down enough, and your desired outcome is to get love in as much as you can. And you'll trade all kinds of things for it. Ladies, listen up. If you've been in relationship after relationship after relationship, especially those of you in your 20s and 30s, where, you know, you give away your cookies because you think that the guy's in love with you or he's going to give you some attention and then he dumps you after three months and you go in that cycle over and over, it's time for you to set some boundaries. But enough of that kind of behavior or parents or other uh, authority figures that told you you were bad or wrong and sucked your energy while they were doing it. So this is how this game looks. They see that you have this energy. They want to hook into you. They want to suck that energy for themselves because they're drained. And so they reel you in because behind their wall is an empath or a sociopath or a narcissist. Usually it's a sociopath or narcissist. Now remember, they were once highly sensitive or empathic. And because of their abuse, they built these walls so that they could survive. So now I'm going to be funny. It's like Dracula. <laughs> Here they come. All I can see is their eyes. But it's a wall that they built up. And inside that wall is a highly sensitive person or an empath. And they still have their spidey senses. And they detect you as a light. They detect you as an energy source. And from behind their walls, they throw out a hook for you. And you go, oh, look, here's a wonderful person. And you know what? I can save them. I can give them enough energy so they're healing. If I stay with them long enough, they'll just whatever they might do. And that person is loving it because you're giving them all kinds of attention. They can suck your energy out. They can drain it out like a vampire. And you get feeling depleted. So if I'm not mistaken, yeah. So you'd start out like a plum and end up like a prune. But you're so desperate for that love that you didn't get, that nurture, those boundaries, that caring that you didn't get from a parent or parents or whoever was raising you or an authority figure or all of them, that you're so desperate for that little drink of love, like water, like you're in the desert, that you will give anything to get it. And so, depending on how old you are and how much of that you've done in your life, you are so depleted right now. And here comes this time and space. Here comes the age of Aquarius. And it is calling you out of the darkness. It's saying, come, come. And you're like, I'm so depleted. <laughs> I can't even crawl. Right? That's because you're letting people drain your energy. Wake up. Draw those boundaries, get some counseling, get some help because you can't afford that anymore. Your energy has to be on your connection, your divine connection with God, spirit or source. It has to be there for you to come into the light of the next level. And my desired outcome is that nobody struggles. My desired outcome is that this video would be shared a million times and a million people would hear this message that need it because that's why you're feeling what you're feeling right now 
And if this message is not appealing to you, I love you, but either you've graduated and you're saying, I've had some of my clients say, oh, Deanna, I feel so great right now. This is awesome. You know, great. <laughs> and different levels of you have worked on yourselves for different stuff. But I'm speaking tonight to those beautiful empaths, highly sensitive people and star seeds that are there and they're feeling this big time. And they're like, what the heck? This is God, spirit, source's way of calling you out of your own self-made darkness. Truth bomb. Because if you're old enough to understand what boundaries are, if you're old enough to protect yourself and you haven't taken means to do so, and you keep letting people abuse you so you can get this little nugget of attention, that's on you. And if you say to me, Deanna, I had no idea, and this is the first time I've ever heard of it, then yay, I've done my job. Now you know. Now get some help. Now take some steps forward so that you can begin to heal yourself. And I'm telling you, if you get right on this and take little teeny baby incremental steps, you're going to feel an uplift. It's almost like you're, you're a um, flat tire and you're going to feel yourself expand but it will be in little incremental steps. Why? Because the human mind does not like change. I've been telling you for a while, if you watch some of my little videos, I hate the C word, change. <laughs> well, not anymore because I have uh, been told by my guides that the time of change is now and that if I will just get myself in that spot, I will be uh, feeling that uplift, that tremendous uplift. It's like crawling across the desert, and you get that drink of water and you're like, oh, yeah, I can rehydrate. This is where we are. If you have any questions while I'm doing this, put them down in the feed. I know this is mostly me just sharing and not asking so much. So it may be a time that you don't want to comment and that's fine. But again, I'm very passionate about this subject. For a long time, I've held back uh, not to like be kind of cussy or out there or call you on your crap. But this is the time that I'm going to have to look at you and myself because we're mirrors for each other and say that if you're not taking little incremental steps forward to shed all this stuff, you're going to be a prune and pretty soon nobody will recognize you energetically. The energy is there. God and spirit of source is there. The universe has been designed in the way it's turning to support us in moving forward because the planet needs it right now because there's so much darkness. There is so much lying going on in this world right now. Yes, people lie. I get it. But right now there's kind of this movie, Robert De Niro. I don't even know if they stream it anymore. I tried to find it one time and I couldn't even get a copy of it. So if you have a copy of it and you want to send it to me, that'd be great. But it's called Wag the Dog with Robert De Niro. And it was where uh, there was a bet between, I think, a producer and a news person. And he said, I'm going to put up some fake news and everybody will believe it. But that's all I can really say because this is a public channel. So go watch it. But there's a lot of that happening. And now it's time to pray and ask God's spirit or source or your guides or, you know, if you can connect in Earth Mother and say, show me the truth, the love and the light because you're going to need it. All right. So empaths you're the one who probably absorbs everybody else's energy when you walk into a place you can't watch the news because it makes you depressed they used to be this exact same way sometimes i still you know i'm with it but the desired outcome is to build boundaries to find out what boundaries are build them safely you know don't shut people out and say poop on you but you know you've got to have some with your time that's what i learned uh, over the last month, <laughs> whether I liked it or not. Crash course. So if you feel like you're in that dark, disparaging place, I've been reading, I read a lot of Facebook feeds because people post how they're feeling. And you feel like people are trying to deplete you or whatever it is. Get some help, draw some safe boundaries, take some steps forward, get yourself safe. Ask for God, spirit, or source of the universe to support you and move your feet. Okay. Now, I'm going to switch to stuff that relates in the Bible because I found this to be extremely interesting. So, um, one of the things that I have noticed in my own life, and I've talked to some of my other 
uh, clients is um, over the last couple of weeks, we used to have things that made us comfortable, that, that comforted us. You know, how many of you have a comfort food out there? <laughs> How many of you go for a drive in the mountains or maybe a walk along the beach or whatever it is you do when you want to feel comforted? And we also have routines that made us feel comfortable and emotionally safe. And those routines and those comforting things don't seem to be working like they used to. And that is simply because you cannot stay where you are emotionally. You've got to let the old stuff go. I did have one question. Uh, Deanna, how can you recognize karma? Because I've been talking about this is a time of great karmic clearing. Go to last week's um, video because I explained a lot more about this. You can on YouTube, it'll be the one before this. And Facebook, you can scroll down. Or if you're on my blog on tools of energy protection, scroll down. It's the next one. But what we're, what's happening is the planets are aligning, the vibrations are aligning, that we can clear our karma. And karma is nothing more than unbalanced energies. Okay? That's what it is. And so if you had another life where you dealt it, guess what? In this life, you get to feel it. And if you don't, or you ignore it or run away from it, it's just going to come back. And so this great opening, this blessing is for us to basically be bathed and wash ourselves clean as much as possible and only have to deal with what's in this life. Or if we've carried stuff from others, we can balance it out now. And one of the steps to do that is to look at what's coming right up in your face at this time in your life. That's what to look at. What's coming up over and over? What are you seeing over and over? What are you trying to go into comfort and run from and you don't want to deal with? That's easy. So I had questions about, well, why would this happen? You know, what, what, you know, is this, uh, somebody told me that this was a bunch of hooey and uh, it wasn't, you know, related to God. So I'm going to call you out. <laughs> you know who you are. And I'm going to refer in the Bible to the New International Version, and I would really like for you to listen to this, even if you're not biblically oriented, you know, if you were spiritually abused in the church, please just listen. This is a story, but it is a story that will give you some insight as to what's happening now. And then I'm going to read from a list I have of things that might go zing, zing, zing for you about what's happening and tell you a couple of steps on how to work on it in this body and this time, and then we'll read the cards. So um, I'd like for you to, to uh, go with me to Numbers, that's in the Bible, 22 verse 21 through 39. Now, if you are a Facebooker and you have seen my little meme to advertise for tonight, it's a little donkey, and I met him a few days ago, and he's so cute. Actually, I met two, <laughs> and I got him to put his nose in the camera, you know, so um, uh, this is a story that little did I know when I was taking his picture was God's spirit source's way of telling me this is what to tell the people. So Numbers twenty two twenty one, Balaam, a dude got up in the morning and saddled his donkey and went to the Moabite officials. But God was very angry when he went, and the angel of the Lord stood in the road to oppose him. So my question is to you, lovelies, what is it that you're doing that is not of the light? What thing do you keep doing that's dishonoring yourself? Is there something that you're doing that's not correct, that's not balancing, that's not bringing you into a state of love? Okay. So Balaam was riding on his donkey and his two servants were with him. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with a drawn sword in his hand, it turned off the road into a field and Balaam beat it to get it back on the road. So I'd like for you to visualize that your mind that is in this old karmic 
or not karmic, sorry. <laughs> Oops. Okay, go back. Take two. Uh, you are, I would like for you to imagine your conscious mind. That's the mind that guides you around. It pulls things from the subconscious to guide you in your world. So I'd like for you to visualize that your conscious and your subconscious mind are Balaam. And the conscious and subconscious mind, you know, the conscious mind is like, okay, here I am, the age of Aquarius, and I'm doing the same old things I used to do, and things are going to balance out, and it's going to be okay. It's just a rough patch. I don't really need to do anything or change. And it's pulling from these old neuro pathways that we're comfortable in. And they're not serving us anymore. So our spirit self, our divine self, our heart light is like, you know what? This is where I'm being called. And I'm going to go over here because, you know, this is the way God's spirit or source is calling me now. So imagine your subconscious, your old neural net pathways are Balaam. And your heart is the path of truth. And when, you, when, when you're going towards your truth, and something blocks that, then reevaluate what your truth is. Because it may be the truth coming from here into your heart, into your loving divine space. So listen. So when the donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with his sword drawn in his hand, he turned off into the field. So basically, God's spirit or source is attempting to direct us, ladies and gentlemen, to get us to go into the path of light because the divine source loves us, cares about us, desires that we be safe. And if you're doing things that are not good for you, that are not good for the collective consciousness of this planet, to move the planet into a higher level of beingness, of joy, of happiness, or peace, then the energy, if you will, is going to block you from going there. Maybe your angels will block you. I know I've had that where, you know, I wanted to leave the house at a certain time. And things happened where I couldn't seem to get going. And, you know, a couple minutes later, I drive by and there's a car wreck that I may have been in if I wasn't blocked. Maybe you're attempting to get, you know, maybe you're attempting to get yourself a better life. And you keep not doing anything about it. So instead of an angel blocking you, you know, I guess there's blocks in non-action. But I've always been a person of action, so I don't know how to explain that. But anyway, so uh, the angel, now this is interesting. So Balaam is all like, you know, I want to keep doing my old habits. I want to keep participating in my own neural pathways. I don't want to go this new way. The God spirit or source is showing me. <laughs> so when the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, oh, sorry. So when the angel of the Lord stood in a narrow path through the vineyards, think about the allegory of the vineyards, the wine, the blood of Christ. That's kind of interesting. But the angel of the Lord uh, stood in a narrow pathway. Okay. <laughs> And I'm telling you, with the alignment of these planets right now, it is a narrow path. Narrow is the way. That's why you've, you know, the door is only this wide. You've got to shed some of this. Of course, I'm talking emotionally. So, I just find this to be funny. The desired outcome is that you're following me and you find it equally as funny. When the angel of the Lord stood in a narrow path through the vineyards with walls on both sides, walls. So, you know, talking, squeaking through. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, it pressed close to the wall, crushing Balaam's foot against the wall. So he beat it. So <laughs> how many of you out there, I don't mean to laugh, but I'm also laughing at myself. How many of you out there are feeling crushed or defeated because what you've been doing in the same way for so long isn't working anymore? <laughs> and you're like, what the heck? Again, I'm just laughing at myself. If any of you at all are, are experiencing this, where you feel like you've been doing the same old, same old, and it's been working for you, 
and all of a sudden it's not working for you, could you please give me a laughing face or a thumbs up or something? Because um, uh, I just think it's extremely uh, funny here. Just a sec. We'll see if anybody's into giving me a, a thumbs up tonight. Okay. All right. Well, it looks like it's a serious subject. So, you know, nobody's thumbs upping. That's all right. <laughs> but think about think about it again, you know, how many of us have put ourselves in harm's way because we're not taking the path of light? Oh, there comes a couple thumbs up. Thank you. So <laughs> again, I find myself doing this too. You know, um, remember last week I talked about framework and how giving yourself a framework so that you can keep going in the right direction and then move within that because a lot of stuff you're going to see coming up is false. And if you don't have the framework, you could get lost in that. Well, I put a new framework up for my business and my personal life. Worked great the first day I tried it, but that was new. So the mind was okay with it. The second day I was working with it, the mind's like, oh, no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> so I got my foot smashed up against the wall. Not literally, but figuratively. Okay. So, um. When the donkey, okay, so then the donkey, uh, sorry, then the angel of the Lord moved on ahead and stood in a narrow place where there was no room to turn, either to the right or to the left. So I'm going to tell you that my guides and God, spirit source in my job has asked me to take this company in a new direction, which you're starting to see the platforms change a little bit. And so I took a leap of faith and I started doing things. I said, okay, I'm going to do the lives on Tuesday. I'm not going to put them in an email and I'll make some separate videos to put out uh, for Saturday emails. And, uh, you know, and it was like, no, don't do that quite yet. You're not ready yet. But I, on faith, was ready not only to walk through the narrow way where I got my foot hurt, but, you know, as it's squeezing, I'm asking, this is the key, I'm asking God's spirit or source or my guides to show me, to tell me, to open the doors for me so I know where to go through and I don't miss my opportunity. And when that's shown to me, I am walking through. Sometimes I run, but right now I'm walking. And if I make a mistake and I mess up, I mean, was it a mistake that I said, okay, we're going to have one you know, video on this day and one on that day and find out, you know, that no, it's not quite the right thing. Um, it's just moving how things are received for my audience. But I made the step. And, you know, I, I took action. And what I'm asking you to do is whatever that is in your life, take action. Did I lose half of my following? Did people hate me because I did it? No, they're just like, oops, little hiccup, you know, and they're gracious and loving. And people who are truly in alignment with you and your life path will also be gracious and loving. If not, make some choices, draw some boundaries. So if I can keep from laughing, this is hysterical. When the angel of the Lord moved on ahead and stood in a narrow place where there was no room to turn, neither to the left nor the right, when the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, it laid down under Balaam, and he was angry and beat it with a staff. How many of you are angry because you can't take steps forward? I know I will get a message to do something, and I, you know, I'm like, okay, I want to do it, I want to do it, and there'll be something in my subconscious mind that'll say, oh no, you can't do that. You're not good enough. Nobody will care. It's not going to help you reach more people. Just keep doing what you're doing because nobody cares. You're not good enough to do that. You're not worthy. And if you want to go really far back in my neuroprogramming, um, I wasn't allowed to speak my truth. And I was shadowed out by someone else who was greater. Not really, but that's what they thought. And they forced me into the shadows. So if that's you, then I'm asking you to take steps. Again, take little steps. Come on out. Come into the light. Um, please don't lay down and get beaten. 
anyway. So <laughs> I'm getting some thumbs up and some laughter. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. This story is so packed full of great information and I'm attempting to stay, you know, in the in the right comparisons. Um, but sometimes, you know, I miss a step. <laughs> uh, anyway. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> this is the funny part. <laughs> I want you to visualize, if you haven't seen it already on, on Facebook, uh, you know, in the little meme of the donkey I took the picture of, uh, the, the desired outcome is I'll get his little picture up on my blog too, so you can see it there. If you're on YouTube, you'll have to come over to Tools of Energy Protection because I can't post his picture there. Um, but can you imagine being nose to nose with a donkey that you happen to be riding <laughs> and it turns around? <laughs> and starts to talk to you in English or whatever language you speak. <laughs> now, I know the animation has done a lot of great things over the years, and they've made little animal lips to look like the, the, they're talking in English or whatever language, you know, but it's hysterical. So here this man is frustrated. He wants to go here, and no matter what he does, his donkey is running him into things, laying down <laughs> and refusing to go on the path. <laughs> How many of you have been there? You know, how many of you have had so many struggles just trying to go forward and thinking you were headed in the right direction? <laughs> anyway. Okay. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, it lay down on Balaam and he was angry and beat it with a staff. Then the Lord opened the donkey's mouth. Think how horrifying that would be back then when they didn't have television or internet or anything else or movies. And now you got this animal turning around talking to you in your native tongue. And then my question is, how many things in your life are speaking to you right now and telling you, you are not headed in the right direction? How many of you? I've had things talk to me in my life, not literally, you know, I haven't had a fly turn around and go, don't swat me. <laughs> but when you're going forward in your life, ladies and gentlemen, things will speak to you. Like I had a woman in the grocery store and I'd been wondering about something in my mind. And she turned right around and just spoke out about what I was thinking about. She didn't know. I think it was probably an angel speaking through her, but it was something I'd been wondering about. And she gave me permission, you know, hey, you know, you had to do that thing and be great. But there are things in your life. Sometimes people say things. Sometimes you're going forward and something pops up that scares you. And you're like, oh, I better not do that. That's how, that's how the universe speaks to you. That's how God's spirit or source speaks to you. If that makes sense to you, could you please give me a thumbs up? Because I'd like to know how many of you are understanding that there are things that talk to you in your life, not necessarily animals. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. Now, <laughs> so here's this donkey that's been beaten. And, he, and it says to Balaam, what have I done to you to make you beat me three times? What have I done to you? So I would like for you to think about your beautiful hearts, your empathic hearts, your highly sensitive person, your starseed heart. And in the neuroprogramming of being a human being, people have told you that you have no worth, no value. They don't want to spend time with you, your parents, or they can't because they're working, or um, they don't help you to be your best, or you get overlooked, or whatever it is that hurts you, that's given you low self-value, low self-esteem, cowardice, and the big one, self-punishment. How many of you go around punishing yourselves? Oh, no, 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 that could not be possibly for me. Or I had a, a client that came to me and said he needed help. 
And I, I literally, during the session, handed him tools for his energy protection. Oh, no, 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 I could never do that. Oh, no, that's not for me. Oh, no, I tried that. So the help was there. And he was punishing himself by holding himself away from the very thing he sought, self-punishment at its best. So, what have I done to make you beat me three times? Notice the number three. Secret to the universe, 30, 60, 90. So my question is, what has happened to you in your life that makes you take out the ugly stick and beat yourself up? Time to get rid of that. And the donkey said to Balaam, Am I not your own donkey, which you have always ridden to this day? Have I been in the habit of doing this to you? So I'd like for you to unlock that and think about that. Maybe open the Bible yourself or pull it up online or on your phone and read this. It's the New International Version and think about how this relates to you because I'll break it down a little bit. Really think about it. The donkey says to Balaam, Am I not your own donkey? So I'd like for you to think about this. Here is your beautiful divine self. It is carbon. It is a spirit in a carbon body. And so there's a part of you in that carbon body that you've always ridden, so to speak, because your soul's inside of your body. And you've been riding it all along. And the heart light has been guiding you to better things, whether you've refused them or not. And so your heart is guiding you to a better future right now, to one of light, to one of love. That's what your heart or your divine self is doing. And you're struggling and wrestling with it big time. So imagine. There's a part of you that's attempting to go forward and succeed and be blessed. And there's a part of you that wants to go back into your old behaviors or patterns, what makes you feel comfortable. Have you not ridden those behaviors to this day? Have the behaviors usually helped you comfort and soothe? We all have our comfort foods. So what the donkey is saying is that it hasn't been in the habit of trying to move forward, or in this case, not go in a place where the angel of light doesn't want to. But that part of ourself that desires to move forward usually would stay within the confines of what we allowed it to do. And now that divine part of ourselves is feeling that calling, that heart light, if you will, and it is pulling us forward, the conscious and the subconscious mind, the subconscious mind doesn't, the conscious mind, the subconscious mind, the human mind doesn't see the future of this planet, of this world, of why you came here. It's incarnate. It's here. And our soul is inhabiting it. So our soul is like, here we go. And the incarnate part is like, no, I don't want to go. No because I'll have to change, right? But if you think about it, before the age of Aquarius, before, you know, post-COVID, or sorry, pre-COVID, we had a way that we loved to live. And now we've all been shaken up. And now we're having to find a new way to live. And that, those that are being called, those that are awake and aware, we're headed in this new direction, but we're fighting within ourselves, like with our own egos. And some of us haven't been in that habit before. So it says, am I not your own donkey, which you've always ridden to this day? Have I been in the habit of doing to this, this to you? Now, yes, I have struggled with my own ego before and my own behaviors before. But not like recently. It's like, you know, I'm not struggling anymore. I'm just pulling it out. It's got to go. And Balaam says, no, you haven't. You haven't done this to me. So once Balaam realized that the donkey wasn't doing its normal behavior, 
and acknowledge that, that's when it says the Lord opened, not the angel, but the Lord opened Balaam's eyes. And he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the, ro in the road with his sword drawn. So I'm asking you to pull that over again to think about this, to, to drink it in and work it out in your own head because there's lots of moving parts. But once God's spirit or source opens you up, your divinity, remember, this is carbon. There's a soul that animates this. And some of us go along kind of asleep and we kind of know we have gifts, but we're not really doing them or we're afraid to come out. And I don't mean to sound like I'm making fun because I've been there. But I've met so many beautiful people that are afraid to come into their gifts. But the Lord, if you will, has opened your eyes. Boop. And it is time for you to move your feet in the direction of your spirituality to open up to that divinity to be at one because as the age of Aquarius goes on if you've done this or this with your spirituality you're going to be left behind because you're not allowing that understanding in it's leading us it's like a shepherd moving the flock along. The angel of the Lord asked him, Why have you beaten your donkey these three times? I have come here to oppose you because your path is reckless before me. Okay. I'm going to switch over and I'm going to read to you what reckless looks like. And again, I bless and love each and every one of you that is staying on. I know I'm going a little bit longer than I normally do, but I'm passionate about this subject. There's so many angles to what's going on right now. You've got astrology and astronomy and Schumann's resonant frequency, and you've got, you know, things that are right in the Bible and, you know, our emotions and our feelings and the world scene, and there's so much. So I'm attempting to boil it down and give it to you in ways that you can take a bite. So, it says, the angel of the Lord says, I have come here to oppose you because your path is a reckless one before me. The donkey saw me and turned away from me three times. If it had not turned away, I certainly would have killed you by now, but I would have spared it. So, I'm, I'm going to move the analogy a little bit. So, that is, you know, not God's spirit or source saying, you know, it would kill us. But what's happening is we're waking up to things that are happening in our life. And we're being reckless. And I'm going to give you some statements that you may be able to identify with. And if you are identifying with any of these statements, you are being reckless with the divinity that has been given to you to shine a light in this world. And if you are one person and you maybe see five people a day at the grocery store, but you have that light within you, and you know that's all that's being asked because you've been placed on this planet according to where God's spirit or source needs you to shine the light. That's it. I'm asking for a little bit more people, but <laughs> yeah, you never know. <laughs> um, but that's it. It's living your everyday life, embracing change, embracing going forward, shedding the old stuff. I've run across people that knew me two, three years ago, and they're like, you're not the same person you used to be. And I'm like, yes, because I got out of a lot of the drama that I used to play. And for those of you watching that I play drama with, big hugs and kisses, I'm really sorry, because it was just where my mind was then. And now I'm seeing greater and greater things. I'm feeling the uplift of the energy that's on this planet and feeling more fulfilled and more loved. It's amazing. All right. So what are some things that you could recognize about yourself that are reckless in your divinity? So there are negative core beliefs within you 
at different levels of your energy fields that may be blocking you from one of these statements, which are positive. So if you're like, ooh, I like that one, but I don't feel that way, this is you. So one of them is my, my mistakes are forgivable. So if you've been beating yourself up because you think if you make a mistake, you're not forgivable or lovable, that's recklessness because you are forgiven. Doesn't mean you go out and do the same thing over and over again and expect to be forgiven every single time. What it means is that don't beat yourself up because you made a mistake. Learn from it, grow from it, balance out the energy, apologize to those that you hurt. You know, if they're still living, if not, you know, write a letter or something and, and burn it responsibly, of course. But it's about balancing out people that we've offended and people that have offended us. And, you know, it's nice when we're forgiven. And, and if somebody says, you know, I forgive you and they mean it from their hearts, take that, thank them. And then go and make a correction in your behavior. Do the best you can. Take little, small, incremental steps. Another thing is um, my opinion counts. There's so many of us that have shrunk away from my opinion counts because you think nobody cares what you have to say. So if you beat yourself up with an ugly stick, you're going to be like Eeyore. You know, I love uh, Winnie the Pooh and Eeyore, but... Oh, poo, blah, 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 blah. You know, he's always so down. So that's depression. Anxiety. Another big one is I'm in charge of my life. Do you feel like you're not in charge of your life? For a lot of women, some men out there, that are involved with narcissists, sociopathic type people, you will be made to get all your approval through those people, not yourself. And it's debilitating. Um, you feel like you're not in charge of your life whatsoever, even though you kind of feel like you're in charge of your life. I was just uh, uh, watching a snippet um, of a TV program where the guy was yelling at the woman you know, because she stood up for herself and she's like, oh, you're right. I'm sorry. And then he's like, oh, you're just the love of my life. Oh, you're so wonderful. You're the only one that can save me from whatever. The dude, that's reeling you in. So if, if a narcissist or a sociopath um, degrades you, anger, you know, telling you you're no good, and then you apologize or you feel bad and stuff. Then they'll come over and go, but you know, you're the only one that can save me or you're the only one in my life who believes in me or whatever it is. And then you feel great because you're the only one. But you're not in charge of your life at that point because you're dependent on that other person to approve you or love you. So those are just a couple that I'll share with you now of what it looks like to hold those energies in, to beat yourself up, to retard those energies. So what I just said is really good. You know, I, I'm in charge of my life. Um, mistakes are forgivable. Uh, that kind of thing. Those are wonderful things. But if you're not engaging in them, that's the ugly stick beating you back. And that's what's being asked to be shed, to live a more full life in this time. And one more that they told me, um, uh, it was actually about your relationship to the world and how you feel. Life is always life is meant to be fun. How many of you are having fun right now? It's the summer. You might be out doing things, but in a post-COVID world, a lot of people are afraid to have fun. That's something to work through, to shed, to let go of, and, and use caution, you know. But you can still have fun. And the other one is. Happiness is always long lasting. You know, that's what I'm still working on because, you know, happiness is always long lasting. Doesn't mean you will have bad days, but if you, you know, if you get yourself into a certain position in life, 
you'll be happier more often than not. You know, little things will come along, you work through them, you draw boundaries, and life goes on. All right, I'm going to finish up here. Oh, good. I got some smiley faces and some thumbs up. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I want to take just a moment and tell all of you that watch me uh, either recording or live and you hang on with me for a while. I really do appreciate it. Um, since I've been sick, I've been having a little bit more challenge about getting these messages out uh, succinctly. That's why it's taken me so long. <laughs> so thank you for hanging with me on that. Um, uh, let's see here. So finishing up this story right now. Um, the angel of the, uh, Balaam said to the angel of the Lord, I have sinned. I did not realize you were standing in the road to oppose me. Now, if you are displeased, I will go back. And the angel said to Balaam, go with the men, but speak only what I tell you. So he's sending him off to, to give him a message, you know, to give him a mission. So if God's spirit or source is sending you in the direction with a mission, whether it's speaking to everyone at your job, you know, in love and light or you know, having a light heart or whatever it is, please follow that mission. Okay. All right. I'm going to pull out the cards. Uh, if you have any questions, again, please put them in the feed. And um, um, I'm so glad, again, that each and every one of you have taken the time to join me. I really do appreciate it. Uh, appreciate you hanging with me while I'm working through this. And again, um, what's happening on my on my channel, on my platform is um, I'm being asked to reshape and give some specific messages, which I'm wanting to, the desired outcome is to send out on Saturday. So these will still go out on Tuesday and be on YouTube and Facebook. All right. So uh, somebody pop in the chat for me real quick. I will read uh, the energies for one um, particular thing. So put in the chat for me real quick. Do you want to hear about health forecast uh, for the next week? Wealth or romance? Put them down in the, uh, in the feed. Health, wealth, or romance. I'm only going to do one this week. So um, again, I'm going to, to shuffle and pull the cards on a health, wealth, or romance uh, prediction or actually the energy shift measurement for the week. And if you're used to me doing a Schumann's and where are we in time and space and that kind of thing and how the planets are aligned and what that's causing, uh, go to toolsofenergyprotection.com, click on Inner Circle, join Inner Circle, and that information will be coming to you there. Okay, well, I got two on health. Anybody else? Okay. <laughs> I got two on health. So let's do health. And I'm going to pull out a deck um, called Wisdom of the Oracle. It's by a really lovely lady uh, by the name of, of uh, Baron Reed. She's uh, quite um, an accomplished individual in my, in my same field. So I'm going to shuffle these and ask that everybody that's watching on the channel I'm going to put your energy into these cards as I shuffle them and ask for information about health uh, and what to expect this coming up uh, next seven days. Okay. Here we go. So the first card popping up for health is called message in a bottle and it came upside down so message in a bottle um, means that your health there's something going on with your health either for the good or the not so good and that message is going to come to you in a way that you're not expecting it so for myself um, because i haven't exercised in the last six weeks because i haven't been feeling well um, I started a couple of days ago to just do simple stretches and, and stuff like that in a 20 minute exercise. And my body's like, oh, you're not as well as you think you are. So the message in the bottle was your brain thinks it can, your body can handle this, but your body's like, uh, not yet. <laughs> so I had to shorten uh, the exercise that I was doing. So 
the message in a bottle, what it means is it's just going to come to you in an unexpected way. I didn't expect to get back into stretching and have my body tell me it wasn't ready yet. So I'm not sure what that might be for you, but just watch out for it. Listen to your body. If your body says rest, rest. If you're exhausted, you know, um, maybe not getting to bed on time. Um, I know with the, the circadian, circadian cycle, the rhythm, our bodies sometimes will stay up longer than they do in the winter time. So just really listen to your body. All right, message number two for the health is go the distance. Here we go, go the distance. So what does that mean? Go the distance means do what it takes to put that framework into your life for your health. So for me, um, I used to uh, try, if I do mean try, to get so many things done in a day and I'm doing this, doing this, and it was all discombobulated. And so you feel like you're moving forward and you aren't because you're so discombobulated. So by me putting that framework in place, whether I'm paying attention to it 100% or not, that framework um, allowed me to go, oh, because now I know what I'm doing at different times. And so what happened was, um, you know, I'm like, okay, during this time, I'm going to work on this. During this time, I'm going to work with my clients. And so what would happen is when I was in that space to, you know, work on uh, copy, uh, work on my book, uh, to get that ready to go out. Um, in that space, the phone would inevitably ring. Emails would pop up. And I would go, oh, I need to get that, right? And then I reminded myself, I've set a time frame to get back to those people. I've set a time frame to be with those folks. And so that is working for me. And it's just a matter of retraining everybody to be in the right space for me to stay in my right space and turn off my notifications when I'm working <laughs> my book. <laughs> All right. Uh, the guides say we need one more card um, for health. Ooh, interesting. This one is called regeneration. And if you'll notice, it's kind of lava down in here, but it's almost in a, a tree. It's almost like a phoenix coming out. So what does regeneration mean? Um, this is about re bringing your divine self in to, to not be so discombobulated. To, to be able to walk that narrow path and to regenerate yourself within that energy and let the rest go. All right. That's it for that, Doc. Anybody uh, have any questions? You pop them down there in the feed. Um, and I'm going to draw a couple of animal cards. Oh, I'm getting some thumbs up. I'm glad you all are enjoying this. Like I said, I'm doing some changes to different things to to serve more people so i am um uh finishing up a book that's going to be coming out about how to have a better relationship with god spirit or source a lot of people don't know how so um uh, it's a workbook and it's really um for those folks that have been in a, a religion or an ism in the past and left it for whatever reason and feel kind of disconnected and for those of you that are connected to, to give you a focus for every day for 45 days. And um, so I, the first one third of the book is being reviewed by an editor. So that's pretty exciting. And then when that gets ready, I'll put that up uh, for you all to purchase or to study. <laughs> okay, so switching over to the animal deck. We did this, the spirit of the animal deck. These are such beautiful cards and artwork. I don't know the name of the artist, so I would tell you who it was. Okay. Okay, they tell me we need two cards for health and a third one uh, for the future. So the first card I pulled for health um, is Grizzly Bear Power. Grizzly bear power. Again, this is about health. Uh, I am indestructible. I honor my intuition and go wherever it leads. Love and gentleness are my real strength. I never give up. I will succeed. I never give up. I will succeed. This is amazing. 
if any of you out there know how to hook a camera up to this so that I can show me shuffling um, the deck, that would really be helpful. That's a technical thing I'm not, not at one with at the moment, but that's about the health. So somebody in the feed uh, said something um, about uh, wanting to hear about romance down here in the feed. Let's see here. There it is. So with this grizzly bear power, I'm going to tell you not only to apply that to your physical health, but also to your emotional health and your love life, because it says to follow your intuition. So if you um, go where your intuition leads you, then you're not going to be risking a relationship that doesn't work or being caught in something that doesn't work. Or maybe drawing boundaries in the relationship that you have in short, small steps so that you can get the distance or the emotional boundaries that you need. Sometimes doing those takes a while. But I will tell you, if you are in a relationship with a narcissist, a sociopath, or a psychopath, they will not respect your boundaries no matter what you do. They might for maybe 24 hours or maybe a couple days, but that's it. So that's not meant for them. All right, the next one in the health, dragon, the supernatural. You are the ancient wise sage. This is about health. You can shape shift at will. Mastery is your destiny, rise with dignity. So shape shifting. Remember I was talking about losing some weight? Well, there's more than just physical weight. Sometimes it's emotional weight. And shape-shifting for me at will means that I'm practicing a healthier diet and getting rid of sugar in my diet as much as I can. Sugar's in everything. Check labels if you haven't seen that. But that will definitely shift your health and shape-shift it. <laughs> all right. Um, then the guides were saying that we needed one last card before we close tonight. Again, I appreciate you all hanging on because... Um, uh, I have had people tell me in the past that when they go an hour, they'll watch the replay for 20 minutes and then they'll wait and they'll do another <laughs> as long as you're getting the information. All right. This one. Uh, the guides are saying this one will be a theme for the next month. So today is 622-2021. So count uh, in your calendar for a month. And they say this is going to be um, one of the themes Oops, for the next month. There we go. And it says Wolf Pathfinder. All right, we were talking about being one with spirit so we can be led, right? <laughs> a pathfinder. Release your past and start a new journey. You are a teacher and help others find their way. There will be challenges, but your soul is strong. Perseverance is your secret power. You have a love that endures. Oh, I'm getting so many hearts and thumbs up. Thank you and loves. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. That's awesome. So here you go, empaths, highly sensitive star seeds. Time for you to cut the path. You got to be the lead dog, so to speak. Thank you. Oh, I'm getting so many hearts. Thank you. I'm not sure why I'm getting so many hearts, but thank you. <laughs> Must have said something everybody liked. Okay, so that's it. Um, I am uh, going to repost this. Uh, it will be here on Facebook uh, and YouTube. Um, and then I'll put a link to it over on toolsofenergyprotection.com. I noticed when I didn't, not enough people were able to follow me over there. Um, so I'll put that up for you. And then um, I am preparing some videos that are going to start addressing Things like what is an empath, uh, what are Akashic records, how do they affect my life so that I can give you some really meat and potatoes about what, you know, what's happening with starseeds, empaths, highly sensitive people, but still keep up these little forecasts. Uh, on Wednesday night, on tomorrow night, if you join the uh, inner circle, I will be covering this in more depth, what we cover tonight, and we'll go really super deep in it. And we're going to clear energies around that baggage for people. So um, if you feel like you are stuck in some sort of karma and you can't go forward in your life, then reach out to me. We'll go into your Akashic Records and we'll clear how many lifetimes that you're holding the same energy as you are right now. And then that'll release you to lead, lead an easier and more effortless life. 
So have a great and wonderful night. Big hugs and kisses. And I'll catch you here next week.